So, nearby Nisha, is there any job out there you think a monkey could do? Quite a few jobs, I think. I think they're quite smart, aren't they? The correct answer is Prime Minister. And then you'd be like, ho 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 ho, like, like you're on an episode of Mop the Week, and you're like, ho 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 ho. I feel like, I feel like you know, monkey could do this job. It could, yeah. Oh, imagine that. How good would that play if it was one day, for no reason, put a baboon in front of the fucking camera and it's like, go ape shit? <laughs> Right, so, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> come on. Speaking of thing, like, God, there we go, still straight out. literally dead. <laughs> like, fucking hell, it's not that boring, is it? So if you were traveling through South Africa by train in the late 19th century, there's a chance you may have witnessed a synergized combo of man and beast never seen before or since. The combination of a man with no legs and a drunken baboon working together to make the trains run on time. A job they both did so well, the baboon ended up getting the job full time. Zanisha, <laughs> discuss. So bizarre. <laughs> discuss. <laughs> so I picked this article, so again, it's one of those titles, I'm just like, what the fuck is yeah. happening? And now you've just read that. It's even funnier. And I've always contended that my best skill as a writer um, is not finding these obscure facts because, you know, they're everywhere. There's plenty of stuff that's obscure out there. It's, like, it's not even that obscure. You can, like, you open up any book and you'll find something worth talking about. It's the ability to frame them in a way that makes you go, hang on, what? <laughs> like this one, at that time a man swapped his legs for a drunk baboon. Well, also, because you explained it as like a duo, it sounds some, like some sort of cartoon. Yeah, you can make a cartoon out of this. Of just like, like um, Pinky and the Brain and Cow and Chicken and all just that. Just man and baboon. <laughs> so if anyone out there is like, what the hell's going on? Let's set the scene. So the two people involved in this story are the man, James Wide, and the baboon, Jack. And the story goes that James Wide worked at a uh, South African train yard um, uh, and his job was basically just like, you know, just general dog's body. And uh, his nickname was Jumper. And he got that nickname because he would jump between trains. Oh, they weren't very imaginative back then. Like, as <laughs> evidenced by the fact they called a baboon Jack instead of like, you know, like Mr. Roundass or something like that. But um, like Mr. Wide eventually um, like, had a horrible accident and both his legs fell off. When a train ran them over. I was going to say, that they just... Well, so when a train runs them over, they do fall off. <laughs> it's the fact you said his legs fell off. And then just paused. So I was like, but they just fell off. Well, again, that's what I think. Like, you know, that's part of a skill there. Framing it in a funny way that, you know, draws your attention. Because they, they did technically fall off. Because when the train ran them over, they weren't going to his body anymore. Like him sat there one day, just sat in a chair. And his legs just decided to fall off. Oh, I suck ass that, wasn't it? Can you imagine? So, like, it reminds me of, I don't know why, that bit in Family Guy. I think it's the only bit that's ever made me laugh watching Family Guy. And it's just Peter when he says, it's that time I forgot how to sit down. And he's just, he just looks at the chair and just, like, rugger tackles it and falls over. Uh, anyway, like, bring it back to wide and his legs falling off. It was 100% his fault. He was jumping between trains, um, landed on the tracks, train came along and run him over. And since we mentioned Family Guy, we actually have a great clip for this because there's all, like... Family Guy very obviously try to rip off The Simpsons every time they do stories uh, based on other bits of media involving the Family Guy crew have a running gag of Joe's legs getting um, uh, like crippled in some way. Yeah. So when they do like their Stand By Me thing, there's a bit of like Joe's legs going over by train. Twice. Oh, oh, my legs! Another train! Oh, 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 what an odd clustered train schedule! If anyone's curious about what I mean by ripping off The Simpsons there, it's a running gag in The Simpsons when they do like their Halloween Treehouse of Horrors. Um, groundskeeper Willie always get killed with an axe. That's a oh, running yeah. gag in those um, uh, little jokes and like Family Guy just ripped that off wholesale and had Joe's legs get um, uh, mm. um, uh, hurt or otherwise left like disabled in some way. I remember when they, like on South Park as well they always killed Kenny and I, yeah. when I watched it more recently I was watching a few episodes and thought you haven't killed him for a while is that... Yeah. Is that the end of the joke? It stopped being yeah. funny. Well, that's what they said. It's uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. They're asked about, like, why don't you kill Kenny anymore? And they held their hands and went, to be honest, for some episodes we forgot. <laughs> There's a couple of episodes we forgot because we just assumed that we killed him because we always did. And then we start to run out of creative ways to do it. So then they started, like, making a joke of not killing him. And then they occasionally did it to bring it back. But it's like, this, we just got, we ran out of creative ways to kill this kid. Yeah, I suppose the, yeah, there is a limit. I like Kenny. I like it when you, you they reveal what he looks like. He's a normal kid. Yeah. He's just a normal. He's so good. He's such a good... He's an anti-joke, isn't it? Of 
Yeah. You've always built up like, what does he like? It's normal kid. Mm-hmm. Isn't he? He's blonde, isn't he? Yeah. So that like, makes sense because like the gang, they all have different hair colours. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, he's the blonde one. And that's where you get like one of the best jokes in <laughs> South Park. It's where they all shave their head, I think. And they're all stood in a row. And, it, and it's like, Cartman comes along and goes, ha but you can't tell which one I am. And he's obviously the fat one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, after Wide's legs fell off due to train, um, he was understandably not of much use to the train company. And this being a time before things like suing the fuck out of your employer for your legs falling off. Um, he was unceremoniously fired and uh, James Wide was not a man to take that thing lying down and he built himself a new pair of legs out of wood, hobbled into uh, his manager's office and demanded they give him his job back. And it's noted that while Wide couldn't do his previous job anymore, the managers were suitably impressed by his gumption that they hired him back as a signal operator, uh, which required him to do like very little movement. He's had to sit in the signal operator's box and then occasionally go get a key that he'd hand off to someone else like the coal shed. Yeah. There was like a very like, you know, like low intensity job that still required a human to do it. And that's a pretty satisfactory ending, all things considered, isn't it? It's like the guy, you know, he lost his legs, tragic, it was his own fault, which he admitted, but you know, he still wanted to work and provide for himself, so they always... You know, and there was a role suited for him? Yep. And they made accommodations for him as well, like, you know, they got in a little stool and everything like that, but uh, it's noted that like James White's trip to work was still a pain in the stubs. And uh, like he had to like quite literally wheel himself to work every day. Ooh. Because what he did is he constructed himself like um, a little trailer, and he would put that onto the train tracks and push himself along that. Oh really? Yeah. So he did show a lot of initiative, and he was like you know fiercely trying to maintain his independence. But he did struggle and he needed help. And that help eventually came in the form of a drunk baboon called Jack. Drunk baboon though. Why is he drunk? Well, he was drunk, Nisha, because he was a hard-working baboon. And the story goes that man and baboon first met um, when James was in a local market and saw Jack pushing um, uh, a big like trailer full of supplies. Mm-hmm. And he thought to himself, "Well, all right, if that was my little wagon, you could push that." You say my little wagon? He's little wagon. <laughs> what is a wagon? No, well, his wagon. <laughs> Do you know the wagon he built for himself? <laughs> not his wagon. I'm not making any sort of untoward. <laughs> No, I'm not, making, I, I, I'm not saying that James Wide fucks this baboon. I'm not saying that there was nothing sexual. This was a purely platonic relationship between a man and his baboon. That is your mind, Nisha. I, did, I said wagon. When James saw Jack pushing that trailer, he thought that could be my wagon. And... I should ask the owner if he's willing to part with him. And it's not clear what the terms of the deal struck between James and Jack's original owner were, but suffice to say, he got the baboon. And, and he was told by Jack's previous owner that he is a very good baboon. He will work very hard. You will be able to train him. However, you must give him, and I quote here, a tot of Cape Brandy every evening before bed as thanks for his help, or he will not work. <laughs> so if you do not give the baboon his brandy, he will not work. So you got to brandy up that baboon. You got to like you got to sauce up that baboon, or he's not going to do his work. And it said that on nights where Jack did not get his brandy, he would be very sullen and would be very lackadaisical in his duties the next day. And that's like every night, give him his fucking brandy. That's the thing, he earned it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Because like uh, James very quickly realised that Jack was a lot smarter than his previous owner had let on, because um, he very quickly started doing his job for him. Because Jack would watch all the things that James did, like you know, operating the signal box to um, like, you know, let trains through and so forth, and also getting the aforementioned keys to the coal sheds. Mm. And uh, it's noted that one day, um, when James had to go get the keys to the coal sheds, which he was alerted to by like a small toot on a horn somewhere in the train yard, Jack just ran out of the door and grabbed it for him. Aww. And then he got the key and he knew where to take it as well, because he knew where the signal came from. He took it to the, like, you know, the person who needed it very quickly and that's when James realised, hang on a second. Uh, so over the next couple of months, James outsourced his job to the baboon <laughs> and taught Jack to do pretty much everything required to run the signal box for the train yard. Oh my God, that's impressive. It's very impressive. It's also terrifying because can you imagine <laughs> like you're a passenger on a train and you go through that train yard and you look and you see that your life is quite literally in the hands of a baboon with a bottle of brandy in its hand. <laughs> And the only thing keeping it in check is a man with no legs. Oh, I really want to make a cartoon about this. <laughs> That's me, man and baboon. But it gets better because, uh, in addition to doing um, James White's like, you know, current job, he also did his previous job 
of guarding the train yard because that's what his previous job was and it's why it required him to like, you know, be so mobile. Yeah. And it said that like while James and Jack worked there, no fucker broke into that train yard ever again because when they did, they had a baboon on their ass. They had to deal with like 50 card. pounds of drunk baboon swinging on them. Yeah. So on top of that, he's also a good bodyguard. Yeah. Good security. Yeah, that's what he was doing two jobs. He oh was doing God. James's current job and his previous job for no pay. And all he asked for was a tot of brandy at night and you know, just food. <laughs> that, that's, and that's what happened because um, someone in the train company learned about this. Like, why the fuck is there a baboon in charge of our trains? That's that's a ni- that's like a legal nightmare waiting to happen. Get rid of the baboon. And James like, well, I can't do my job without baboon. I told you I had a helper, which he did, yeah. but he never told me it was a fucking baboon. <laughs> Get that and, one like, quiet. And the people in charge like, well, he did tell us he needed help. We just never realised he had a fucking baboon doing it. And James went into the executive's office and told, look, why don't you see if the baboon can do the job before you fire him. So like, what do you mean fire him? He doesn't work. It's like, well, maybe you could hire the baboon and then it wouldn't be an issue. It's like, it's, there's so many issues here. But they, 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 they humoured like James and they said, okay, we'll give the baboon a test. And they ran it through the most complex series of signal trials they could imagine. Like the absolute worst case scenario, for, like 50 trains at once turned up. Right. And, they, and the way they would do this is like they'd put out multiple like whistles and stuff signaling what needed to be done and they even played some just to try and confuse Jack and he reportedly didn't make a single mistake. Wow. And this is a test that I, you know, some people couldn't do and the baboon did it perfectly first time. Oh my god. And they were so impressed that they were forced to admit maybe the baboon's good enough at the job to stay. It's better than everyone else. Which, well, that's the thing, they put it through the same test, they, they put it through a harder test than they would do, an actual signalman, and he passed. It's insane, isn't it? Like you said, quite scary though. <laughs> that the baboon was like so seemingly smart. better suited for the job than people that they hired. And the combination of James and Jack was like, you know, amazing for them because they got a really, really good signalman and his assistant who also doubled as a security guard and a bit of a tourist attraction. Yeah. Because who doesn't want to see the fucking baboon? Operating trains was amazing. And do you know what makes this better? What? Is that they hired Jack yeah. and he got paid $5 a week, which is about the equivalent of like, I think like 30 to $50 today, and they gave him a bottle of beer on Saturdays on his day off. <laughs> so not only did he have beer, you know, have brandy as well. Oh, uh, it was a good beer. Well, like you said, it's hard work. That's me, that's me. He needs, needs to relax. He worked, like, that's the I, I think after like, you know, 10 years of flawless service, we know we're saying that he deserved a beer. That's amazing. And uh, we don't actually know what happened to Jack. All we know is that he had an untimely demise and James was understandably um, quite distraught. And there are rumors that his hide exists in like a museum somewhere in South Africa, but those rumors have yet to be confirmed or denied. All we know is that this story is fucking awesome and they need to make a kids TV show out of it. Yeah. Like, like if it's like cow and chicken peeking in the brain, Jack and James. Man and baboon. Or man and baboon, like Jack and James. Or at the very least, just animate the story. Yeah. Like you, that could be easy, like a 10 minute animation. And I'm reading through the article now, it's like, there's nothing that I missed except for the joke I made about why being stood like, you know, just off to the side as Jack was doing the test going like, yeah. If only because I got to you find an excuse to use like one of my favorite reaction images for future armor. <laughs> yeah. like just showing Bigfoot just comes out and goes like, there's something great about it, but yeah. Jack the Baboon. You couldn't make this shit up.